Hey everybody, time for a new video and uh, today we're talking about Dolby Atmos and Pro Tools on a single PC Windows. They said it couldn't be done, it can be done with the help of a little program called ASIO Link Pro. Uh, full credit to Sam Hocking, there's his YouTube, for coming up with the idea of using ASIO Pro in place of the Dolby Audio Bridge. Uh, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need to get that. You're going to need to get the Dolby renderer. So let's hop onto the internets and get you what you need. Uh, do a little search. ASIO Link Pro. You'll come up with uh, the website. There it is. Odeus. Rock me arm Odeus. There's an installer. And there's also two patches. So you need to download both the installer and the patches. Uh, because if not, it will only run in demo mode, and that will suck. Sadly, the guy who created this passed away, but his family uh, made it available to be patched so that his good work could, could uh, continue, which is nice. Next, you've got to head over to Dolby and get yourself a copy of the V5 renderer. This is the new one that's just come out. If you head on here, you can get a free trial. That's 90 days, which is pretty good three months. Uh, you'll need to sign up and you'll need to have an eye lock for them to put your license on. So head over there, sign up, they won't hassle you, and uh, get all that down, get it installed. Make sure you install the Pro Tools templates that come with the renderer for the I.O. and the sessions, because you'll need those. Now, the patches. ASIO Link installs into the 32-bit program files on your C drive. You need to copy the patches. The 32-bit goes in this folder, and then the 64-bit goes in this one. And then you're just going to need to execute them both in these folders. So double-click them. If Windows says no, ask for more info and tell it to run. After this, you'll see success. Hit enter to exit. Do the same in the X64, and you'll be good to go. So now we need to set up an ASIO driver for ASIO Link Pro to use. Click on here and start. I've currently got mine set up to use my uh, SSL ASIO driver for my SSL converters. But if you don't have one, when you first open it, this window will pop up and it will show you the available ASIO drivers on your system. I tried this generic low latency one, I just couldn't get it working. So I'd suggest selecting whatever the ASIO driver is for your particular hardware. In my case, it's the soundscape for the SSL converters. And that sets up your base ASIO driver that ASIO Link Pro is going to use. From there, you can pretty much shut this down and we'll go over and open up the renderer and have a look at some of the settings we need to sort out there. So I'm just clicking it on another screen. There it is. Uh, open it up. Now, first off, you'll get a couple of warnings. This Windows service error, this pops up every time you open it. You can go into your task manager and turn this, this service off if it worries you. I've never had a problem with it causing system problems, but meh. Now the audio driver error is going to be there because we don't have a device chosen yet for the renderer. So over in settings, we're using ASIO, uh, where you'd be using Core Audio in a Mac for the Dolby Audio Bridge, we're using ASIO. And we need to select an input and output device. ASIO Link Pro is what we're going to use. So click on that and this look, there's some other settings here, but for the moment, we'll just hit accept. That'll initialize an instance of ASIO Link Pro. So what's what this is doing, this is opening up this one. This is gonna be like the server for ASIO Link Pro that will receive audio. You've got to make sure enable multi-clients is ticked. And that's pretty much all you need at this point. This is what you have to do. You have to have this instance open all the time before you start Pro Tools. Now back in the settings, there's some other settings that, you know, audio sync. You should probably set it, you can run it without this, but you should set it to time code over audio. And because we only have 64 channels in ASIO Link, you're going to use channel 64. Uh, your headphone render mode, set it to binaural. And I probably would say a lot of people looking at this only have headphones. They don't have a speaker array. I have both, so uh, I'm running it. But if you have headphones only, you can put it into headphone only mode and 
then you set where your headphone routing is. This is output one and two of my converters. But as I said, I've got speakers, so I don't run it. I run it on both, and that means that one and two are my headphone out as a binaural down render, and the rest of my speakers actually come out in the room. Uh, you know, there's look, there's a lot of other stuff in here, but it's all you know. There's bass management, which I don't use, but all this stuff is sort of more related to actual Atmos rather than setting this system up. Frame rates. I'm running 25, Apple Music suggests 24 for music, but again, that's that's not so much what this video is about. Uh, this is more about setting up the, the, the Windows system. So now that's done, we need to go over to Pro Tools and do a bit of setup there. So I'm gonna close this down, but don't forget anytime you're gonna work in Atmos, you need to start this renderer before you open Pro Tools. So let's go over to Tools now. Okay, so ignore that for now. First things first, playback engine in your setup. So that's norm, my normal SSL setup. I don't know why I've got all those extra mice there. Anyway, it's kind of creepy. You need to use AZ Link Pro, the same way you would use Dolby Audio Bridge as your playback engine if you're on a Mac. But we're on Windows, we're the special ones. Hit OK and that will bring up another version of ASIO Link, another instance. And this is kind of like a slave version. You can see this is the one that's running with Pro Tools. And over here, this is the one that's running with the renderer. So this is kind of like the server receiving stuff, which is why it has to have multi-clients enabled. And the other one with Pro Tools up in the title, is the one that is being sent to this server. So get that out of the way. And on the Pro Tools version, you need to have route to ASIO in ticked to be green. What that's doing is routing this to the input of the other main server instance that is feeding the renderer. And the other thing we need to do in the setup is go to peripherals to connect to the renderer. So enable Dolby Atmos. And if this uh, connection status light starts blinking, you just need to go into this drop down where it says desktop, that's my computer, and choose your computer. And that connects to the renderer for sending the metadata as far as pan data, etc. cetera. Uh, that's French for I'm not sure. So that's the basics of that setup. We also need to go to IO and if you installed the, the templates, uh, which you should have done with the Dolby renderer, you can import the settings. Now, Dolby Audio Bridge Stereo and Mono, there's, you know, Mono is if you've just got all mono objects. Stereo is uh, best for a combination of both, so I would, I would use that one. Click in, load that, replace your existing buses, don't add to it. And then uh, you'll notice at this point, You've got all the objects set up. You've got up to 129. We only have 64 because AZ Link Pro only has 64 channels. So you can go, you could delete every object from 65 up to clear things out if you want. Same with the buses, you know, uh, you could delete every bus from 65 up. And then over here, you'll see normally the buses need to be mapped to a renderer input. The bed is already mapped. These objects aren't, but they will be mapped as soon as you load a template, rather than having to go through and do them all individually. So back back to those session templates that you should have loaded also. Did you load them? I, I told you to load them. Choose the stereo one, open that up. One sec, while I name everything and create folders. This music's getting funky and just disregard that. That LTC generator is because the template in includes a timecode generator that is not built for Windows yet. That's what that's looking for. Poor old Windows cave dwellers that we are. And that's just to do with sync, syncing the renderer to your timeline, which is this external sync button, and we'll, which is what we're gonna use object 64 for. You can see all 64 there. Uh, but we'll talk more about that later. 
And as I mentioned before, like all these, all these templates are built for Dolby Audio Bridge, which has 128 channels. We only have 64, so I'm going to delete those objects just to stop it getting, you know, too messy. And it'll clear up the timeline a bit. And it'd be a good thing to go through, delete all these and resave them as your own template. Then I think I'm just going to import something. I'll just import a stereo track. Um, you can see that is assigned to object 11 and 12, uh, which is toggled on and off by this orange bus. But again, that's that's not what today's about. Um, if I hit play on here, we go to the renderer. Have a look. You can see it coming up, objects 11 and 12. Uh, you can see the objects down in the theatre box there. Uh, if you toggle it back off, it'll just go to the bed. We'll go back to the renderer. You can see it coming in one and two of the bed there. So that's the basic concept of getting it from Pro Tools to the renderer as either an object or a bed that you can pan, you can move around, whatever you want to do. Now, all, there's also time code, external time code, to sync the two, which you need. You need if you're going to get loudness measurements or anything like that. So we're using object 64. Remember, we did that in the settings of the renderer. So I'm going to disconnect. This already, due to this template, has an object assigned to it. I'm going to disconnect that for now. And I'm going to create a mono track that I will now assign to object 64. And that's what we're going to feed the time code on and that's going to feed the renderer, which will slave to our timeline on Pro Tools. And uh, also, this, this music, this is what the X-Files would have had if David Hasselhoff was in the lead. Toggle it into the object, object 64. And I've got an a audio file, wave file of time code at 25 frames. You can, you can go online and find, there are websites where you can just make five minutes of 25 frame per second time code or 24, whatever. Um, I've just got an audio file that I use because I don't have a generator plug-in. Dolby have one, as I mentioned, but that's only for Mac at this point. Uh, and now once you've got that on there and feeding it down object 64, the renderer will slave to your time code in Pro Tools. So if I hit now play, go back to Pro Tools, if I hit play, the renderer is automatically stopping and starting with me. Um, there's a couple of reasons that's handy. If you can see over in the loudness, you only get loudness measurements when it's synced to an external sync and running in time with that. So you need the renderer in external sync to get a loudness reading, which is important. Also, once you've done a pass, you can actually do drop-ins on master files. I don't know much about that. I haven't gotten to that point yet, but but basically that's why you want it to slave, yeah? As I said, the, the LTC generator is not available for Windows as yet. I've asked Dolby about it, but I haven't heard back at this point. Now, issues. There is one issue with doing it this way that I've come across, and I haven't worked out how to fix it yet. I, it may be fixable, uh, but that is that when you have to open the renderer for before you start Pro Tools and that, that launches like the server version of ASIO Link Pro. Then you open Pro Tools and that brings up the slave version of ASIO Link. Now, while you've got these two open, if you make any major changes in the render settings and click accept, it reinitializes. So it basically closes ASIO Link Pro and reopens it really quickly. But while it's doing that, the Pro Tools version, which is kind of the slave version, sees that, I think this is what's happening, it sees that nothing is open and it becomes the master server version instead. And then you get this little warning about couldn't create shared content or whatever. And you have to close them both down and start them up again in the correct order. So it's worth, you know, working out what settings you need and getting them saved into the renderer before you launch Pro Tools. There must be a way around it, but as I say, I haven't found it yet, but I will keep looking. So, oh yeah, I hope, I hope that helps someone get this going on this system and into the world of mixing in. Atmos. 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 Atmos.